Everyone who's played enough of the Dark Souls series and its contemporaries has probably asked themselves at least once, wouldn't this be better if you could just skip the levels and fight the bosses? Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption tries to answer that question, distilling the Souls-like experience into just eight devilishly challenging duels. Though it is not quite an airtight proof of concept, the idea is at its core makes Sinner an interesting blueprint for a boss rush twist on the classic Dark Souls model. While its concept is sharp and well thought out, much of Sinner feels rough and underdeveloped. The story is simple and vague. As the nameless wanderer, you must defeat the avatars of the seven deadly sins, each drawn from the wanderer's past. The stakes seem high, but you never actually find out what is on the line, which ultimately made it hard to get too invested. If you need a reason to fight beyond embracing the challenge, you will be left wanting. The characters and levels feel similarly untextured. The Nameless Wanderer is a smooth, graphite-skinned boy with no distinctive features other than glowing retinaless eyes. He looks like a character model, not a character. Likewise, many of the levels are simple arenas surrounded by blurry, shapeless vistas. The one exception to this rough look is the bosses, who feel much more defined than the worlds around them. From Envy, a headless woman in an armored ballroom gown, to Greed, a scythe-wielding plague doctor spewing poison from every pore, each sinful challenger has an interesting set of skills and aesthetics. Though Sinner is largely derivative of Dark Souls and its ilk, it subverts the genre in a few key ways, beyond just cutting out the levels, that pack fascinating ideas and meaningful progression into a game that purposely limits the number of chances it has to make an impression. In keeping with the punishing aesthetic of the genre, Sinner weakens the powers and abilities you have as you progress, rather than giving you new ones. Before entering each boss fight, the Wanderer must level down, which imposes a new penalty from reducing his health and stamina, to weakening his attacks, to making his shield breakable by heavy attacks. The system creates a Mega Man style strategy to choosing the order of your fights. You'll have to accept all the penalties by the time you reach the final one, but there is a balancing act between avoiding the penalties you find most severe and prioritizing the enemies you want to fight unhindered. Sinner's second great strength is in how it forces you to engage with each fight as a multi-stage puzzle as well as a technical challenge. Every boss has at least one attack or string of attacks that can kill you outright if it lands, making them seem unstoppable. To circumvent these seemingly impossible odds, many of their attacks have special interactions with either one of your abilities or the environment, which offer you an opening or, at the very least, a way to avoid dying instantly. Envy, for example, opens the fight by throwing a variety of projectile weapons, including some axes that stick into the ground. Later she switches to lightning attacks, which are tough to dodge but can be blocked by her leftover axes. There is no indicator to suggest you should use the axes as shields, so it's up to you to mix things up and observe, which adds creativity and fun to fighting the same bosses again and again. If you pay close attention, you'll pick up enough of these meaningful interactions over time to create a winning strategy. Between figuring out each boss and perfecting your execution, each win feels like a masterstroke. Though its achievements feel very incremental, Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption moves the Souls-like genre forward in some interesting ways. The slimmed-down structure presents some challenging and entertaining boss fights, but doesn't quite feel like a complete package. It lacks narrative and aesthetic detail, but there are a few clever new ideas hidden inside its generic shell. For more on Sinner Sacrifice for Redemption, check out the first 10 minutes of gameplay, and for more Dark Souls-inspired games, watch our reviews of Death's Gambit and Dead Cells. For everything else, keep it right here at IGN.